Germany has admitted that Russia may have managed to listen in as senior Air Force officials discussed whether Ukraine should be supplied with Taurus cruise missiles. Chancellor Schultz has stalled for months on whether to supply Ukraine with the weapon. They have a range of up to 500 kilometers and so could in theory hit targets inside Russia. One MP doubted whether it was just an isolated case of eavesdropping. Die Bundesregierung muss ihre eigene Zeitenwende in der Kommunikationstechnik leisten, denn das wird sicherlich nur die Spitze des Eisbergs sein. Und außerdem muss geklärt werden, warum der Bundeskanzler mit Falschbehauptungen in die Öffentlichkeit geht, wo er sagt, dass deutsche Bundeswehrbeteiligung vor Ort nötig sei. The leaked recording reveals Air Force officials discussed using Taurus cruise missiles to hit the Kerch Bridge, which links Russia to the strategic Crimean Peninsula. Schultz has been reluctant to send powerful weapons to Kiev, fearing it could draw Germany into the war. A Russian drone killed four people and injured eight others overnight on Friday in the port city of Odessa, city officials have said. One of those who died was a three-month-old baby. The Odessa region's governor, Ole Kipa, said that the Iranian-made drone was shot down by air defences and it was falling debris that had hit the apartment building. The military reported that the Odessa region was attacked by eight drones and that seven of them were shot down by its air defences. Nationwide, the air defences were reported to have shot down 14 of the 17 drones that attacked. Meanwhile in Russia, a drone attack caused an explosion in a building in St. Petersburg. Local media reported that six people received medical help, quoting the press service of the city's health committee. Russia's defense ministry hasn't commented. Russia's MASH news site said that the building was hit by a Ukrainian drone. The far right was the biggest fear at the party of European Socialists Congress in Rome. It's expected to win big in June's EU parliamentary elections. In his speech, German Chancellor Olaf Schulz proclaimed the very soul of Europe is at risk. And the socialist candidate facing Commission President Ursula von der Leyen in June told Euronews the challenge was to ensure no one was left behind. We have to have a, a social Europe, a social Europe where every citizen feels not left behind. We are taking care of citizens, all those also who might have difficulties in present times. Purchasing power, but also the transitions and the changes in our economy. We will not leave them behind. Schmidt is not predicted to remove Ursula von der Leyen from power in June. But Euronews' correspondent says a socialist candidate does look set to replace Josep Borrell, the EU's top diplomat. No que respeita aos cargos de topo nas instituições da União Europeia, o centro-esquerda tem agora o alto representante para a política externa. Mas no próximo mandato, os socialistas deverão lutar para ter a presidência do Conselho Europeu, que reúne os líderes dos 27 países da União. Among the socialist leaders, a Portuguese Prime Minister António Costa has been mentioned as the ideal candidate to take over from Charles Michel, the European Council President. But Costa says it's still too early to decide. Um debate das diferentes famílias políticas sobre os lugares a preencher, a distribuir, como é que eles serão, como é que eles serão ocupados. Até lá se verá o que acontece. Meanwhile, the leader of the socialists in the European Parliament emphasized how important fighting climate change is to the party. 2023 was the hottest year on record, and drought hit her country, Spain, particularly badly. Es nuestra responsabilidad como europeos garantizar el planeta para las futuras generaciones y por eso hoy tenemos ya que poner en marcha unas eh, políticas y unas medidas en, eh, para luchar contra el cambio climático, pero hacerlo además de una forma en que la transición sea justa, que no paguen la factura del cambio climático los que más lo necesitan. The socialists also promise to push for more military and financial aid to Ukraine and to boost the EU's budget for defense and security.